Uh, Brett is an the intellectual grandson of B.F. Skinner. Did his graduate work at West Virginia University uh, with uh, Julie Vargas, who was uh, Skinner's daughter. He is the CEO of Brett Denovi and Associates, uh, based in South Jersey. One of the largest, if not largest, human services companies in the entire East Coast. They've won multiple awards for how well they treat their employees. Right. Our goal is to, is to try to encourage employees to do to work because they want to, not because they have to. So it's not always that way. And there's there's days that people you know wake up and it's not your most favorite day. And there's things that you have to get through you don't want to do. But for the most part, it's it's it, it excites me and a lot of our leaders when when an employee can get up, they they can get excited about the day and there's a, there's something that they do better than anyone else and they're excited about it. So mm -hmm. that's like that's my oxygen to see that employees are pumped up. I like to actually if I can do it, I will do it. So I, I like to model for people what that looks like. So I, I don't ever want to be in a situation where I give someone something as far as a recommendation or a strategy regardless of what it is, if I can't do it myself or I won't do it myself. So it's sort of like that supervisor that's not afraid to get dirty, get their hands dirty, kind of roll up their sleeves. Uh, I really take a lot of pride in that. I want to be able to model what that appropriate behavior should look like. The behavioral principles, but for me, what I do on those days when I feel a lack of confidence or a lack of energy, I just use behavioral momentum, so I start engaging in a couple high probability type uh, actions that are easy. Like I may just do one, two, or three things that, that that come natural to me that are easy that I can I can make progress on and get momentum. And then each subsequent action or task that I do in the morning is followed up by something that's just a little more difficult, but it, it allows me to get momentum. <laughs> Talk a little bit about those uh, soft skills and how you work to sure. We found that uh, things like making eye contact, things like being able to use empathy statements, um, just pairing yourself, um, smiling, mm -hmm. those are some of the skills that often um, BCBAs may lack, especially maybe coming out of a graduate program where those are not skills that have been uh, worked on or practiced or taught. And working in a school district or going into a home, those may be things that will really help you um, work with that family member or work with that school personnel to really get buy in. So, mm -hmm. um, those soft skills are, are really important, especially for younger BCBAs who may not view them as a necessary comp a component of, the, of their skill set. Check under the hood. Yeah, can you please tell me privately? If there's anything that I promised you guys that I didn't deliver. So I, I would urge that leaders set up contingencies where you have an opportunity for anonymous feedback. So sometimes by putting people and the learners before the profits results in, a, in great things that lead to future opportunity. refreshing because they're they're going above and beyond expectations and that role modeling that as a leader is what makes a lot of our folks um, uh, strong leaders because there's nothing that myself and our leaders wouldn't would suggest for someone to do that we wouldn't do ourselves mm -hmm. so we really strongly believe in you know walking the walk and I think that when you walk the walk, you're demonstrating discretionary effort, and that kind of bleeds through the uh, fabric of the agency. And then the folks that report to the leaders, they also uh, see your, you role modeling it, and that's where it starts. And then they engage in just discretionary effort. Mm -hmm. Like for example, culture is when you know the CEO of a company is getting ready to walk into a very important meeting with a superintendent or another CEO to close a big deal. Mm -hmm but they get a call from an employee on the front line that's upset and they need your help and you drop what you're doing to go help the employee and you get back to that CEO later. That to me is written culture. I mean really, I can't wait till there's some failure. Do your mistakes that you make 
how you how you respond to that, and then the, it is so important because that's what ma I think it makes or breaks your character and your relationships. With you. I've worked in organizations historically where you really, really worked hard and you've demonstrated high levels of performance. You got more work, no extra pay, but the lazy worker was complacent and got paid the same amount. I'm just showing my curious. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think just about everybody did. Sweet.